my name is Zach Coburn, and I am here representing Ether Delta. I want to start by giving a little background about who I am. I started my career as a professional options market maker in Chicago for a firm called Optiver, and I quit that job in the middle of 2015 to pursue a career in entrepreneurship. Around the beginning of 2016, I started looking at Ethereum full time, and that's what I've been doing ever since. I am also a co-founder of First Blood, which is a decentralized platform that lets esports players challenge each other and win rewards using the blockchain for settlement. And then, of course, Ether Delta, which I'm here to talk about today. Ether Delta really came from my realization that with the ERC20 token standard, it was possible to let anyone trade tokens through a smart contract, and there really needed to be an interface to let people do that as easily as possible. Um, so Ether Delta launched in July of 2016, and that was shortly after the DAO fiasco, and it was also months before the ICO craze even really started. When it first launched, there were really only a couple of tokens you could trade. I think it was Maker and Digix. Um, and so it's really come a long way since then. It is a decentralized trading platform, um, and what that means is that you don't have to trust a central party to hold your funds because they are held in a smart contract. And it is, as of today, the most used dApp on Ethereum by a variety of measures that I'll get into later in the presentation. Here's a screenshot of what Ether Delta looks like today. Um, you can see there's basically a list of tokens you can trade. There is an order book, depending on which token you're looking at. There's some basic charting functionality, and there's this list of trades. So a question that's often asked is, what exactly about Ether Delta is decentralized? And what it really is, is that when you go to deposit, you are sending funds to a smart contract and they are held in a smart contract in such a way that you and only you can withdraw them. So you can think of it almost as a multi-sig, but it's really a single sig that only you can use with some additional trading functionality built into that smart contract. So that additional trading functionality is what enables trade settlement. Anytime that you um, do a trade on Ether Delta, you're sending a transaction to the smart contract, and the smart contract decides, is this trade valid? And if it is, it will actually move funds from you to your counterparty and vice versa. So the, the functions that I, I kind of went through already, you can deposit, you can withdraw, and that includes Ether or ERC20 tokens. Um, those are two separate functions, meaning that when you deposit, of course, that's different than a withdraw, but also if you deposit Ether, that's different than depositing a token. But the user interface handles all of this for you. And then, of course, there's the trade function, which is the core piece of functionality. And order cancellation is also something that goes through the smart contract. So if you notice, there's something missing here, which is where is the order book? And the order book is actually an off-chain construct. And so whenever you go to do a trade on Ether Delta, you are taking the volume that you want to trade, the price you want to trade, um, and also an expiry block number. You package all that stuff together, hash it, and sign it. Um, and so what happens is when somebody else sees your order in the order book and they want to trade with it, they will submit that order to the smart contract. The smart contract will check, uh, does the signature actually match the order that was uh, created? And also, does the counterparty and do you have the funds available to actually complete this trade? If all those things are true and the order hasn't expired yet, then the smart contract will do the trade. The, the expiration is, of course, a block number. So you can, if you'd like to have your order last forever, you can choose a block number hundreds of years into the future, or you can do a block number that expires tomorrow if you want the equivalent of like a good for day order. This off-chain order book technology was pioneered by EtherOps, which was sort of a precursor to Ether Delta that I worked on in the beginning of 2016, where it was basically a platform where you could trade options based on the Ether to US dollar price. And it had a similar off-chain order book um, technology. And the real point here is that as a, a former trader, um, I, I really believe that you should encourage people to add liquidity and make it as cheap as possible. 
And so when you, when you add an order to Ether Delta, it is literally as cheap as it can possibly be. There's no gas fee because you're not sending a real transaction to Ethereum, and there's also no trading fee. So it costs you nothing to basically play the role of a market maker on Ether Delta. Every other operation that you do does involve a gas fee. So if you are depositing, withdrawing, doing a trade, canceling an order, all those things involve a gas fee. And then finally, there is a fee for taking liquidity. So if you, if you see another order in the order book that you like and you want to trade it, you'll be the person paying the fee for that. And that's really Ether Delta's business model. Here are some statistics of how it's done to date. There are a total of 90,000 addresses that have traded with the smart contract. Of course, some of those might be, some people might have more than one address, but it's a pretty good measure. There are 30,000 daily users using the site, and it has processed a total of 3.4 million transactions in the smart contract. This is a view from the site ethgasstation.info, and it basically lists all of the smart contracts and ranks them by how much gas is being spent on transactions going through that particular smart contract. So Ether Delta is typically, uh, it's most commonly in, in the first place, and the percentage of gas that's going through Ether Delta tends to vary between 10 and 30%, depending on the day. This next chart is a list of all the smart contracts. This is from Etherscan and it's sorted by number of transactions that have gone through those smart contracts since the beginning of time. And so Ether Delta is in first place with 3.4 million transactions. You can see a, a number of other names from Poloniex, Bitrex in the top four and five, and then the first real DAP up there also is ENS with just over a million transactions to date. This graph shows the total transaction volume since the beginning of May and it's in Ether. So when the snapshot was taken at the end of October, there was a total of about 1.8 million Ether that's been traded through the Ether Delta smart contract. And this is really a testament to not only Ether Delta's success, but really the explosion of the token economy um, in Ethereum. You can really see June, July, like that's when I would say the ICO craze really started. I did a quick survey recently of Ether Delta users to get a sense for what do people think. I collected some written feedback, but also some numbers that I can actually show you today. The first question is, what is your overall opinion of Ether Delta? And the plurality of people, just over 20%, actually love it. Um, I was a little bit surprised to see that it's so weighted to the right-hand side. I think a uh, general impression of Ether Delta is that you hate it until you love it, meaning you come, you're very confused, you've never used anything like this before, yeah. you, you guys know. Um, and then five minutes later, after a conversation in the support channel, you figured everything out and you love it. It's the best thing you've ever used before. I asked, uh, how frequently do you use Ether Delta? The majority of people use it either daily or hourly. Why do you use Ether Delta? So this is interesting. The top choice was tokens to choose from. Um, and so one of the things about Ether Delta is that because it's happening in a smart contract that supports the ERC-20 token standard, you can trade any token you would like. There's no restriction. Um, some tokens end up being officially listed on the site, meaning that the, the token has approached me and they want to actually appear on the list of tokens in the volume box. Whereas there are also tokens that trade just as custom tokens, meaning someone imports the token address and just starts trading it. And then the second place answer, it's decentralized, just under 30%. An odd thing is that I sometimes talk to people, uh, users of the site, and ask, do you know what's different about Ether Delta? And their answer is often not, oh, it's decentralized. There are a lot of people using it that don't really realize what are the benefits. They're here because there are so many tokens. They're interested in one particular ERC-20 token that maybe they weren't able to participate in the crowd sale or they want to, to sell something, and that's why they end up on the site. So I'll go through a handful of lessons learned. Um, I, I think probably any decentralized application can have some takeaways from these. The first one, maybe you remember this picture on Twitter. 
this was a case where the URL for EtherDelta was changing from a GitHub pages URL, which was etherdelta.github.io, to the .com, etherdelta.com. And the only way I could initially think to verify that the new domain name was actually associated with EtherDelta was to take this crazy picture uh, late one night. There was also a video the next day. Another thing about EtherDelta that I think is really important is there's this Gitter channel. Um, in the beginning, there would be you know, one or two users per day coming through this channel to figure out how do I use EtherDelta. Now there are 10,000 people signed up and it's really just a constant stream of, of questions and answers. And I think this is really important. There's actually a, a team um, behind this now. So if you go on the, the chat room, you'll see EtherDelta Rep 1, Rep 2, Rep 3, Rep 4. They're answering questions during most hours of the day. And I think this is really important, um, especially when like, your DAP comes online and people actually have to understand things about how Ethereum works to use your DAP. Sure, you can hide a lot of it in the user experience, but sometimes the user is just going to have to understand how does gas work in order to really figure out what's going on. This is a graph with daily volume on the y-axis and funds raised on the x-axis. And I've highlighted Ether Delta here in the upper left quadrant. What I'm really trying to say here is that you see a lot of these um, decentralized trading platform projects raising funds right now, um, and they haven't really launched. They don't get any of the volume. Ether Delta is a prime example of your business model does not need to involve raising capital as a first step in order to succeed. Um, so more on that, like when I was starting Ether Delta in July of 2016, really starting to build it in late April, I think, um, I, I thought good and hard to myself, how can I do this without first raising a boatload of cash? And secondly, how can I possibly monetize this without creating a token? And I realized that all I really have to do is charge a fee. And that's what EtherDelta has been doing for over a year now. Um, it is a respectable business model that I wish more people would do. So here, here are just some, some statements that I, I would make to, to new projects entering the space. If your first step is to raise millions of dollars, you aren't taking a real risk. <laughs> taking a real risk will make you work harder. Um, I mean, I was a year ahead of the curve with this project, but I was also working hard thinking there are probably other people who have had this exact same idea doing the exact same thing. I could go in, okay, I didn't know it was a thing then. I, I could have done some kind of an ICO, um, or I could just work hard and build a product. And finally, having a pile of cash takes away your urgency. Um, I, I really think there, there are enough data points now that this is a very true statement um, and EtherDelta is a prime example of, of what not having a pile of cash can allow you to actually achieve. So there are a handful of things that are new about EtherDelta that I want to bring up. One, you may have noticed that prior to the Byzantium hard fork, there were a lot of transactions backlog in the Ethereum network. I would sometimes look and see thousands, 6,000, 8,000 transactions pending in the Ethereum network, and there would be half of them were EtherDelta transactions. Um, the Byzantium hard fork has helped a lot. You no longer have to wait upwards of a day to get your trade done, which is just completely unusable. Um, and you, you won't really as frequently find out that after you've submitted a trade, it turns out someone else already did the same trade and your transaction failed, wasting gas. Um, what many people don't know is that a new back end and front end for Ether Delta went out the day after Byzantium, and so also the front end itself is a lot more live. Um, prior to this update, you may have noticed that the order book was on the 60 second refresh cycle, um, which was pretty unbearable at times. Now the order book is uh, real time and streaming into the front end, and so you shouldn't have the, the situation anymore where there are stale orders. Um, and you can't really get a sense of where the real price is. So the remaining bottleneck here is really Ethereum itself. If EtherDelta gets the same level of growth that it has received since, um, since the beginning, if more dApps start coming online and pushing significant transaction volume, 
then um, Ether Delta could be in the same spot again where there are lots of pending transactions and you can't get a trade done. And so at this point, Ether Delta is depending on Ethereum itself to, to scale to the next level if uh, things continue as they've been going. So along with this backend and frontend update, there's a new API. Um, there was an old REST-based API that um, people were using to, to do trades, to present data. Um, the new socket-based real-time API should make it much easier to build things like trading bots on top of the Ether Delta API or things that can work with the data and display um, interesting graphs or things like that. So there are two examples on the GitHub. There's a maker.js and a taker.js. The maker.js is an example of how you can use the API to add liquidity, meaning if you want to start market making um, it, by placing orders in the order book in an automated fashion, maker.js is an example of how you can do that. And then secondly, taker.js is if you want to um, create trades through the smart contract itself, there's an example of how you can do that. So maybe if you want to build a bot that does both making and taking to potentially do arbitrages between Ether Delta order books or other trading platforms for these different tokens. Um, and those are, of course, available on the GitHub. And there's also a document describing the API. And there is also um, the, the examples are in Node.js. If you are interested in getting those examples ported to other languages, there are a couple of bounties to port them to C Sharp and Python. Um, those are the two most popular languages that people are asking questions about how they can do the same thing in a language of their choice. So that's all I have. Thank you for listening. <laughs>